What's up, guys? Welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today, we are opening up a pack of Rise of Eldrazi, which is absolutely a stunning pack. There are quite a few fantastic cards in here. Hopefully, we will pull one. Uh, but again, as you saw with the last Crack a Pack episode of Homelands, what we're going to try and do is actually read through all these cards uh, since these tend to be fairly short videos anyway. And that way, we can actually take a look at what's in here and maybe do uh, sort of a limited draft. If this was our first pack in a draft, maybe what would we decide to pick? So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get some interesting cards. And we do start off with a pretty good common uh, Flame Slash. One red and it deals four damage to target creature. Great removal, especially in limited. Uh, absolutely would be fine with that. Prophetic Prism uh, is a two cast artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. And then you can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it essentially fixes you, uh, which is great. Um, I actually, in Masters 25, which was, by the time this goes up, fairly recently released, I guess, um, this was in there, and it actually helps you smooth out your mana really, really well. Uh, even in a two-color deck, sometimes you can get away with it. It's, it's definitely kind of worth it, I would say. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Gloom Hunter is two and a black for a 2-1 bat with flying. Uh, to me, this isn't great. Again, it's a flyer, which is decent. Uh, the vanilla test isn't great, right? It's a three cost two one, but with the flying, it kind of puts it up there. Uh, again, it seems filler though to me. So definitely wouldn't first pick that. Haze Frog is three and two green for a two one frog with flash. So you can play it anytime you can play an instant. When it enters the battlefield, prevent all combat damage that other creatures would deal this turn. So it's definitely a defensive card in terms of you want to play it late game when you theoretically could be losing the game. Um, but what I would say about this, and if you've actually watched the podcast episode on Quadrant Theory, you can kind of look into this. Uh, that was not our theory, by the way, just to clarify, that was Marshall Sutcliffe. Uh, we just decided to do an episode on it because we found it to be really helpful. Um, and in this, this really doesn't, in the Quadrant Theory, excuse me, this doesn't really do that much. So not first pickable in my mind. Uh, Battle Rampart, two and a red for a wall, a 1-3 wall with uh, Defender, obviously, and you can tap it, and target creature gains haste until end of turn. Uh, a little bit awkward, in my opinion, for red, just because red tends to be, uh, I can't speak necessarily for this set, but red tends to be the aggressive color, so having a wall uh, doesn't really work, but it does grant haste. So in that sense, it's actually pretty good. That being said, I don't know that I would want to first pick that by any means. Uh, Deprive is actually a great card in Constructed Popper, Two blue for an instant. As an additional cost, return a land you control to its owner's hand, and you get to counter target spell. Uh, it's great that it's a two mana counter spell. Yeah, you have to bounce a land, but uh, countering something that's really, really problematic is actually great. I generally don't like uh, too many control elements in a limited format, but a straight up counter gives you some interaction, and because it's not really specific to a creature or an instant or a sorcery or anything like that, it's actually kind of worth it. So I don't know that I'd first pick it, but it's definitely in the running. Uh, Demonic Appetite is one black for an enchantment aura. Enchant a creature you control. It gets plus three, plus three. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Uh, this is interesting. So it's definitely a token-based thing. You want to be able to have other creatures that you can sacrifice. Uh, in this set specifically, there's a lot of Eldrazi spawns, so that actually kind of works. Uh, not first pick in my mind, because at the end of the day, it is just a, a buff. So, not for me. Uh, Spore Cap Spider is two and a green for a 1-5 reach. Uh, it's really just a blocker. It's nothing amazing. Uh, definitely something that I would, I would run just as filler against something like a blue-white flyers deck, though. Uh, Stalwart Shield Bearers is one and one white for a 0-3 defender. Other creatures you control with defender get plus zero, plus two. So it builds up your wall for sure, but defenders in my mind are not fantastic. There is actually a defender deck, if I'm not mistaken, in this set with Vent Sentinel. Uh, but again, not my favorite. Shared Discovery, one blue. As an additional cost uh, to cast it, tap four untapped creatures you control and draw three cards. Again, with the Eldrazi spawns, this can actually work, but it is a very big price to pay to be able to tap four creatures, so not my favorite. Here we go. So this is a great first uncommon. Palaka Worm. Four and three green for a worm, a 7-7 seven, seven worm with trample. When it enters the battlefield, you gain seven life. 
and when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. Excuse me, just draw a card. You don't. It's not a may ability. Uh, I would definitely first pick that. That seems fantastic over the other cards. Uh, Merfolk Sky Scout two and two blue for a two three with flying. Uh, when it attacks or blocks, untap target permanent. Pretty good actually, but definitely not what I would pick over Palaka Worm. Uh, Crab Umbra one blue for an enchantment enchant creature and uh, pay two and a blue to untap the enchanted creature. Decent, again, uh, if you're trying to leave up defenders and blockers and stuff, but not really my favorite. It also has totem armor. And our rare is Thought Gorger. So two and two black for a two two horror with trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter for each card in your hand. If you do, discard your hand. Uh, that's interesting. And when it leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each 1-1 one, one counter on it. I don't know if that's good or not, to be honest. Uh, I definitely could see how it could be. It could get you out of some situations, and then even when it dies, it's kind of okay. Uh, the one thing I'd be worried about is something like enchantment removal, which, to be honest, I don't know how heavy that is in this set. But something where it doesn't actually kill it, it just, you know, kind of does something like that. I don't know. It seems a little interesting to me. Um... Personally, I would probably go for Palaka Worm. Again, with all the Eldrazi spawns in this set, you can actually ramp pretty quickly. Uh, so I'd be hopefully picking up some of those mana enablers and those, those spawn creators just to be able to play this guy because he is massive and limited. He is a huge bomb. Uh, with that, I could also see Thought Gorger being a pick, though. So I could be incorrect on that one. I'm not really sure. But... With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. Uh, with that, though, I think I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys.